Hello, and thanks for viewing this video demonstrating an example Sologic root cause analysis using CauseLink. My name is Brian Hughes, and I am an instructor and an investigator with Sologic. CauseLink is our browser-based root cause analysis application. If you aren't familiar with the term root cause analysis, just think of it as structured problem solving. The Sologic methodology is applicable to many types of problems. The purpose of this video is to provide you with an example you can use as a reference for creating your own RCAs. You can download this and other examples from our website, www.sologic.com. Just click on Resources and then RCA Templates and Examples. In this video, we're going to examine a quality escape. For those unfamiliar with this term, it is used to describe when an off-spec product is produced and then shipped to the customer. The problem we are going to review involves the Hubble Space Telescope. It's hard to believe that the equipment that produced these and many other beautiful images was originally so flawed that it was completely unusable. The original images captured during initial testing once the telescope was positioned on orbit weren't nearly as nice. They were blurry and out of focus. This was the result of what is called spherical aberration and it will be the focus of this RCA. I'll be using CauseLink to walk through the example. CauseLink is our browser-based root cause analysis software. It helps me complete individual RCAs and allows me to run reports across all RCAs in the system. The first step in the Sologic process is to gather and manage data. All RCAs are driven by data. We get this data from many different sources, but in this example, I'm pulling information primarily from a few different online reports. I document them here in the evidence table where I can later associate them with causes in my analysis. We can store documents, pictures, and links to outside locations from here. The second step is to write the problem statement. The problem statement starts out with the focal point. This is the focus of the investigation or the problem that we are working to solve. In this case, I chose spherical aberration in Hubble Space Telescope images returned from orbit as my focal point. I chose this because it allows me to examine both the fact that there was spherical aberration or blurriness and also why it wasn't discovered until the telescope was on orbit. This is a classic setup for a quality escape problem. We look at both the error pathway, which examines the problem, as well as how the quality management system missed the problem. We need both sides in order for an escape to occur you should be able to set up your own quality escape problems this same way. The rest of the problem statement is easy to fill in. We look at the date or date range, where the problem occurred, the actual impact, the frequency, and the potential impact of the problem. The third step is to build a cause and effect chart. The Sologic cause and effect chart is a logic diagram built from left to right present to past. Most effects are the result of two or more causes. We express these logical relationships with branches in the chart. A cause and effect chart is useful for analyzing any kind of problem. That's because nearly everything that happens can be expressed in terms of cause and effect. The chart is scalable too. Cause and effect charts can be whatever size they need to be depending on how important the problem is. I'll show you how it works with a simple example, then we'll walk through the Hubble chart. You add causes by hovering to the right of the focal point and clicking the plus sign. You can add as many as you want and build subsequent branches as needed. Drag and drop different causes or branches wherever you want. This is important because building a cause and effect chart is an iterative process. We don't get it right the first time. You can actually facilitate an RCA using CauseLink. 
We estimate that a facilitator using Coslink can complete an RCA in 50% of the time as someone using a different tool, such as Excel, Visio, or even sticky notes on a dry erase board. Going back to the Hubble example, you can see that the top pathway will focus on the issue of spherical aberration, and the bottom pathway will focus on how the flawed telescope got into orbit. Remember, a quality escape is a combination of an off-spec product along with a breakdown in the quality management systems. So let's look at the spherical aberration pathway first. What's causing the blurry image is the fact that the light reflected from the outer edge of the mirror comes into focus at a different point than the light reflected from the center of the mirror. If they don't focus in the same place, the image formed will be blurry. This happened because the mirror was ground too flat on the edges. Whenever something is supposed to be one way, but turned out a different way, we can represent the gap with two causes. One cause states the actual value, and the other the expected value. We see this pattern all the time, and if you're familiar with quality problems, you will have seen it too. Now, the as-built value was due to an error that occurred while grinding the primary mirror. This error was not discovered during the grinding process. Sound familiar? Oftentimes, quality problems happen early in the process. Quality checkpoints along the way miss early errors, which then are allowed to perpetuate from one step to the next. The quality escape pattern often repeats throughout the production cycle. The primary mirror is ground based upon data from a measuring device called a reflective null corrector, or an RNC. This mimics a perfect image that engineers can use to compare with the actual image produced by the mirror. They assess the difference and then use it to set the next polishing parameters. These engineers put a lot of trust into the RNC. It was designed specifically for this project and they had a lot of confidence in it because they won the bid by producing a smaller mirror perfectly. But the problem is that the RNC was positioned 1.3 millimeters too far away from the mirror. Positioning of the RNC was critical. They knew this. Their method for getting the spacing right was to use a mechanical measuring rod as a standard. This rod was fitted with a special field cap on the end to make sure that it lined up perfectly. They would set the distance by reflecting light off the end of the rod through a small hole in the end of the cap. Now the field cap is also reflective, so they painted it with an anti-reflective coating. But somehow this coating got damaged and they ended up bouncing the light off the surface of the field cap instead of the rod. Want to guess the thickness of the field cap? Yep, it's 1.3 millimeters. The RNC was the only measuring device used to set and check the mirror polishing parameters. That isn't to say that measurements weren't taken with other devices, they were. And amazingly, these other devices were sensitive enough to pick up the error. But the team did not consider the results credible. The RNC had been certified as accurate and was therefore never questioned. This error was not discovered due to major gaps in the quality management system, both at Perkin Elmer and at NASA. The quality people at Perkin Elmer were inexperienced, and they were not allowed access to the metrology on the project. Quality reported to operations, there were many problems and distractions with the project, including threats to pull production from Perkin Elmer. In this environment, the importance of quality was downgraded. Up to now, we have been focusing on how the error occurred, but how did the flawed telescope make it to orbit? Well, once the mirror was certified as being complete by Perkin Elmer, it was integrated by Lockheed Martin based on input from both Perkin Elmer and NASA. 
NASA accepted the mirror based solely on Perkin Elmer's statement that it was built to spec. And in fact, according to Perkin Elmer's final calculations, the mirror exceeded the required tolerance. Of course, the baseline they were using as comparison came from the RNC, and we know these values were flawed. At this point, you may be wondering why they didn't perform a final end-to-end test of the telescope. It turns out that such a test would have required two mirrors, both larger and equally precise as the primary mirror, and this simply wasn't feasible. Now, if this 90-plus cause chart is too much for you, you aren't alone. A big chart is necessary for a big, complex problem, but often we can produce a smaller, summary chart that can be delivered along with the report. The chart I'm showing you now only has 15 causes. Of course, this summary chart will be much thinner on the details, but it will also be easier to read and digest. After we build the chart, we can identify solutions. For this problem, I used the solutions recommended in the Hubble Space Telescope Optical Systems Failure Report produced by a team led by Lou Allen of Jet Propulsion Laboratory and dated November of 1990. They are strategic in nature, as you would expect from a report like this. But a big chart like this one could yield many additional solutions ranging from tactical to strategic. Notice how each solution has its own workflow. Solutions progress from identified to selected, to approved, to completed, and then to validated. Finally, we pull everything together into a report. Coslink produces a nice report as a PDF file. It allows us to share what we've learned with others, and it documents lessons learned for future employees. I hope you found this example helpful. You can download a PDF of this example problem at our website, www.sologic.com. You can view our other videos there or on our YouTube channel. And as always, don't hesitate to contact us with any questions or comments. Thanks for your interest in Sologic.